Hey guys, here we are making some uh, churro ice icebox crackers. Uh, this recipe is pretty simple. Um, I had my butter at room temperature and my cheese, and I took my walnuts. I know that you have more than enough walnuts for this recipe, right? I think you have like double the amount. And I chopped them, but I, I didn't, it, your recipe calls for chopping them finely. I actually like leaving bigger chunks. Um, so I so I left them kind of like that. If you like them finely, then fine chop them finely. I just find it that they get a little sandy, so I, I don't I don't like using them that way. And then and I have my flour right here. Um, I've been uh, creaming my butter with my cheese, and it should look kind of like that. Um, if you don't have a, a stand up KitchenAid uh, a hand mixer, will do. Okay, and. Uh, one thing that is uh, crucial for this is that your butter is at room temperature and you actually let this mix for a little while. Um, our next goal now is going to be uh, to add our flour and then blend in our walnuts will be the last thing. Just think of it as a, the same way that you make uh, chocolate chip cookies but we're just using cheese instead. This is uh, basically a fancy version of a cheese it Okay, so. Now all I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to add half of my flour and then I'm going to uh, mix that through. And you'll notice that it will start picking up the cheese from the side of the mixer, okay? And that's kind of what we're looking for. Stop there. It should look fairly crumbly. If you look at uh, if you look at this, look kind of like that. And then we'll add the other half of the flour since we have it already open. <laughs> My machine's uh, trying to give me a hard time here. We're just gonna mix it until it fully incorporates. You'll notice that first it will get really crumbly and then it'll come back together. And uh, it doesn't look like it's enough butter, but it is. It just takes a little bit for it to mix. You'll know when to stop because the sides of your bowl will be clean. And we're gonna have this dough right here. It will look like so. Notice how the sides of my bowl are nice and clean. And if I grab some of this dough and I press it, it stays together. I don't wanna press it all right now because we still have to add the walnuts, okay? I'm gonna, there you go, about half of the walnuts are going in my bowl. I'm moving my mixer out of my way. And um, you could, you, you have two things that you could do. You could leave it in the mixer and just use the paddle just like you would chocolate chips. Or you can just squish it by hand like so, right? And my goal is I'm squishing the dough and I'm getting the walnuts in there, okay? And then, I know my hands are a little warm, but it'll still work. You should have a, a piece of dough like this. And then I just kind of push him to the center. So I just squish it and then push him in. All right? And when you have a log that looks kind of like this, you're pretty much ready to go, right? So now that we have that part ready, I'm going to move this to the side. Um, I have a piece of parchment here. If you don't have parchment, that's okay. Um, you can use plastic wrap, aluminum foil, a piece of paper. It doesn't matter. Um, we're going to do the same procedure as we did for uh, compound butter. Okay, so just squeeze the log. 
until you have it almost the size of the paper. Okay, and I have about three fingers in each side of the paper that I can, that I still have room for, right? And then I'm going to roll my dough like so. And I want to keep it as uniform as I can with my fingers. I'm rolling through, rolling through. And then when I get to the end, I can tighten one side like so. I'm just twisting it. And then I want to hold that side. And then I'm going to tighten the other side. Okay, now we got to refrigerate this before we cook it, right? Um, if you feel like you want to do it a little bit faster, um, just like I am, I'm going to put mine in the freezer for about 15 minutes or so. I should get solid enough that we can cut slices out of it and bake off this uh, cheddar crackers, okay? That's the first part. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. There's my loaf of uh, cheddar cracker. It looks pretty nice and sturdy. I like leaving the paper on my board when I'm gonna cut this so they don't stick to the board, although it's cold enough that they shouldn't. I, I like doing that. And then, uh, then we're gonna cut these into this little disc, right? I'm going about about a quarter inch on this guys, okay? And just push down. If you start cutting yours and it starts squishing, it just needs to go a little bit longer into the fridge or the freezer, right? And that will let us know that It'll let us know if, it, if they're ready or not, right? Like, so the goal here will be to cut them like so. And I already preheated my oven to 350 degrees. If you haven't done that, you can go ahead and uh, start your oven, continue cutting, but then know that you should put them in the fridge until um, you're ready to go. Okay, your oven will determine that. And then I have a sheet tray here uh, for my crackers, and then just leave some space. They're not gonna, they're not gonna go crazy like like when you were in the bakery and making uh, a cookie. But I still leave some space in between. So I'm putting. I don't know if you can see that. I'm putting four, and then on my next row, I'm just putting three and I'm going right in between. And then I can put four on the next one, and then three on the next one, right? And I actually, since I only have a little bit, I have a half sheet tray here, um, I have enough room to spread them out even a little bit more, okay? So I'm gonna give them some more room. There we go. I got 12 and 6, about 18 cookies. Somewhere, anywhere between like uh, 15 to 18 cookies should be what what it gives you, okay? And, and then you should be good to go. I know your recipe says that it'll give you 50, but that's if you cut them really thin, okay? If you, if you cut them like this, you'll have a better size cookie. And it should take about 8 minutes to cook, 8 to 10. Um, Sometimes they take a little bit more. It all depends on uh, on the oven, what rack you're putting it on. Like, um, like we always talk, this is just a guideline. So just look for them to be yellow and crispy. They should look like a cheese it, right? And then um, if you're not for sure, just pull one out, leave the rest in the oven, and then take a bite of it if it has a little bit of crunch. Right when it's really hot, it's going to have a little bit less crunch, but it should be... It shouldn't be doughy in the center, and that's what's going to tell you that it's good to go. And um, just in case some of you guys are wondering, um, although we don't have any egg here or water to keep that bind, the cheese will melt and bind it together. So they shouldn't be crumbly. They should be a solid cracker. So I'll see you in about uh, 
10 minutes. All right, team. Crackers are done. Um, took about 12 minutes. Um, I, a couple of things went right when they came out. I sprinkled some salt on them, although I put salt with the butter at the beginning. Um, there's more at the end. Things to look for, um, just in case you are uh, wondering as they look a little pale in the, on the top. Um, I'll show you, uh, I'll show you this guy right here. Looks kind of pale on the top, but if you look at the bottom, you'll notice that the cheddar cooked and you have the, the specks of, of the cheese coming through. And that's gonna tell you part of when they're done. And then they should be, I mean, these are still kind of warm, so they, they're kind of biscuity, right? They're, so they feel kind of like a biscuit, but they're not doughy in the inside. And that's what you're looking for. And you should be able to taste the crunch of the cheese in the outside and then the melty cheese in the inside until they cool down and then you should just taste like a cheese it.